Hey everyone! In this video, we're going to go through three creative ways to use conditional formatting in Microsoft Excel. Conditional formatting is a great way to highlight key pieces of information, as well as make your datasets more visually appealing to the audience. Before we get started though, I want to give a huge shout out to the thousand subscribers that have subscribed to the channel. It means a lot to me and is very heartwarming to see. And I can't wait to continue this journey along with you all. And with all that said, let's get into the video. In this example, let's say that we're a project manager that is looking to create a new phone app. We can see here that there are a lot of tasks that need to be completed for the project to be successful, so we'll be using this tracking sheet to keep things organized. What we want to do here is make the dataset easier to read by using conditional formatting to change the format of the row based on certain criteria. The first formatting change that we want to make is to highlight the high priority rows red. To get started, the first thing that we need to do is select all the cells that we want to apply conditional formatting to. Then we go up to conditional formatting, and from the list of options, we'll select new rule. Now we have a bunch of rule types to pick from, but we're going to select the last option here that says use a formula to determine which cells to format. Now in this text box here, that's where we're going to enter in our formula, so we'll start with an equal sign. And because we want to reference the priority column, which is in column E, and more specifically the first value in that column, we're going to use the cell reference E2. Now right now as it stands, we're using a relative cell reference to cell E2, which is not going to be ideal because that will result in Excel evaluating if each cell in this highlighted section contains the value high. To make sure that we only check the value in column E, we need to adjust the E portion in this cell reference to be absolute and we do this by entering a dollar sign in front of it. Now we can complete the formula by checking if the value in this column is equal to the word high. Now that the formula is complete, we can go ahead and choose how we want to format the rows when it meets this criteria. So we can do that by clicking this format button here. And right now we're in the font section, so we're gonna change the font style to bold and we're gonna change the color of it to be yellow. And then let's move on to the fill section and we want to make the color of the background red. So let's click OK and we get a preview of it here. So what will happen now is that when each cell in a row is being evaluated, it will check if the value in column E says the word high. For example, when Excel is evaluating what conditional formatting to apply to cell B4, it isn't checking what value is contained in cell B4 anymore it's checking the value in cell E4 because in this rule, we made the column an absolute reference and left the row as a relative reference. So let's go ahead and click OK. And now it's much easier to identify which tasks are considered high priority. And if we were to change a task to high priority, such as this one here, we can see that the high priority task has now become red. And if a task isn't high priority anymore, such as this one, we can see that the red highlight and yellow text goes away. The second and last change that we want to make is to cross off our completed tasks so that viewers aren't drawn into those tasks and they can focus simply on the incomplete ones. Similar to what we did previously, we're going to select the cells we want to apply conditional formatting to, and then go up to conditional formatting, and then we're going to select new rule. So selecting the last option again, we're going to enter in a formula now instead of E2, we're going to use F2, and we just have to make sure that we put the dollar sign in front of the column reference. And then we'll check to see if the value in the column says the word completed. Now let's go ahead and make the format change here. So under the font section, we're going to make it bold, and we're going to change the color to this gray color here. And then we're going to use the strike through effect. And now under fill, we're gonna make the background color this dark gray here. So let's go ahead and click OK, and then click OK again. Now we can see that this task got completely grayed out, and if we were to change the status of another task to this, let's say this one to completed, it got grayed out too. Another creative way to use conditional formatting in Excel is by creating heat maps, which are useful to help make sense of large and vast data sets. In this example, let's say that we are a financial analyst and we want to see which products the company is generating the most revenue from. That way, 
we can decide which products we want to invest more time and effort into. Right now as it stands, at first glance, it's hard to tell which products to invest time into, so let's use conditional formatting to help us. To start, we need to select the data that we want to apply conditional formatting to, and then we'll go up to conditional formatting. Now from the options here, we're going to select the color scales option. Now there's a bunch of options to pick from here on the right. And as we cycle through, we actually get a preview of what it will look like. This option here looks more appropriate because the bigger the number is, the darker green the background color of the cell becomes. And the smaller numbers relative to the others have a darker red color. So let's go ahead and select that option from this list. Now with this heat map, there are three big things that we can take away from it. The first takeaway is that we can quickly interpret results. Rather than scanning through numbers in a spreadsheet, we can quickly see where the highest and lowest product sales are. The second takeaway is that we can uncover trends. With conditional formatting, we can see that the product sales are at its lowest at the start of the year, with average level sales during the year, and the highest sales at the end of the year. And the third takeaway is that we can enhance the presentation of our data. With conditional formatting, this data can be shown to an audience of decision makers and convey important pieces of information so that they can make informed decisions. Our third creative way to use conditional formatting is conditional formatting on a pivot table. In this example, we have a data set here that shows project information such as the portfolio that it belongs to, the region the project is located in, and the year the data is for. We also have the budgeted cost, forecasted cost, and the variance between the two. A positive variance here means that we are forecasting to spend more than what's budgeted for, and a negative variance means we are forecasting to spend less than what's budgeted. Let's create a pivot table and use conditional formatting to gain new and interesting insights on our variances. So let's go ahead and create our pivot table by first selecting a cell in our dataset and then going up to the insert tab and then clicking this pivot table option here. So we can see it's already selected the dataset for us and we want to create the pivot table in a new worksheet. So let's go ahead and click OK. And then from here, we're gonna move our field list so that it can be a little closer to where the pivot table will, will be placed. So let's go ahead and build our pivot table by first moving this project field into the rows area. And then we're gonna move this year field into the columns area. Now, because we're interested in looking at variances, let's go ahead and move the variance field into this values area. Now let's say that we want to highlight the top three positive variances. We can do that by selecting one of the cells in our pivot table and then going to the home tab and then under conditional formatting, we're gonna pick this option here for top bottom rules and then we're gonna select this option here for the top 10 items. Now, because we only care about the top three, we're gonna change this 10 here to say three and we'll keep this option here to highlight them red. So let's go ahead and click okay and we can see that the red highlighting has only been applied to one cell. Now to apply this to all the cells in our pivot table, we're gonna select this icon here that currently is defaulted to selected cells, and we're gonna choose this last option here. And just like that, we're able to highlight the top three positive variances. Now let's do the same thing, but highlight the negative variances instead, because that way we can indicate which project spent less than its budget in a given year. So with the same cell selected, under conditional formatting, we're gonna select the same option here, but the bottom 10 items. And then we'll change this 10 to a three. And instead of this option here, we're gonna make it a green fill with dark green text. So let's click okay. And then we're gonna select the same option here. And now we've highlighted the top three projects that are forecasting less than their budget. Now what's great about this is that the conditional formatting is gonna stay intact as the pivot table changes. So remember we have a couple more fields such as portfolio and region. So let's go ahead and put portfolio in front of project. When we added that field in, we can immediately see the pivot table change, but the values that were highlighted before are still highlighted even though they sit in different cells. We can do this again by adding in the region, and we're gonna put the region in front of portfolio. The same values are still highlighted even though they sit in different cells in our spreadsheet. 
And it's not just limited to moving fields in and out of our pivot table. We can actually change the report layout of our pivot table to something like tabular form. And the conditional formatting will still be kept intact. As we can see, combining conditional formatting and pivot tables gives us a great way to create dynamic reports along with eye-catching visual indicators. And those were three creative ways to use conditional formatting in Microsoft Excel. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit the like button down below and consider subscribing to the channel if you want to see more content like this in the future. I'll see you all in the next video.